Hi, this is Ricardo Diaz welcoming you once again to the Immigration Forum TV. And, uh, well, it's a new year and we have lots of great ideas about what could happen, but ultimately uh, helping us see what has happened could help uh, all of us set the immigration uh, debate, uh, whether it's national, state, or locally. And uh, as always, we bring uh, somebody to talk to us and enlighten us about how things are and how they could be. So today we have the mayor of Champaign, Don Girard. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a little bit of time we get here, but uh, it, uh, I first had the idea of inviting you when, uh, when actually when you signed that letter that you were mm -hmm. going to mention a little while ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but first we want to talk about you. Um, I didn't realize really who you were. I, I, mm -hmm. I finally put your name in Wikipedia, you know, mm -hmm. or well, actually just on Google and see what comes out. <laughs> yes, and besides the other stuff. You know, that was sort of actually, uh, to be fair, I had a lot of uh, music, uh, music stuff and other things about me uh, were out on the internet. And when I was running, I remember if you, um, if you Googled Champagne Mayor, the next word was birther. So I thought I wanted to get on Google <laughs> Hell or High Water and get rid of that. So now if you Google Champagne Mayor, you, you, take, you gotta scroll down quite a ways for that. So. For, for that one, yeah. yeah. But now your, your, your entry for both on the Wikipedia, but then your, your Facebook, mm -hmm. all really good stuff shows up. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm um, really proud of that. I think in the, you know, uh, it, never been elected to office before. It's the first time I ever ran for anything. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, to be the highest elected official in the city of Champaign, to be, that's my first elected position. There was a big learning curve, and it was a, a personal learning curve and a mm -hmm. professional learning curve. And I think the professional was a lot uh, flatter than the personal. So, uh, but kind of got into a rhythm. We had a lot of good things happen. Yeah. You know, we had change in leadership at our police department, change in leadership yeah. at, the, at the city itself, with the new city manager, Dorothy David, who's wonderful. Uh, so many things have changed in the city and we've got some really good momentum going. So I'm very, I'm very proud that uh, I'm able to crank out more things associated with me that are uh, far more positive and yeah. not just, uh, you know, my, my personal well, life. Well, before we go on to only the positive, and this is not the hot seat, but uh, your music uh, was mm -hmm. important and your population as a music personality was was up there I mean that, yeah. that helped you Abs oh absolutely you know it, it didn't hurt I think that uh, when I was running it my name was out there a little bit more and then after I won it really helps us uh, in Champagne for the fact of that it's something for people to talk about so it adds so it kind of stretches beyond just uh, the city borders you know even to a regional and even international uh, yeah. so you know I, I was mentioned on uh, you know, MTV had me one of the five politicians with musician musical credibility. You know, so I mean, that's kind of a, it's kind of a kick. But I know some people who've done well in the music business. I know some celebrities I've met. You know, who were nobodies when I met them, and it's kind of neat because in the social networks, it, it generates excitement, yeah. generates interest, it gives people a reason to pay attention. And so while they're, uh, you know following me because I'm chatting with Ryan Adams or something or John Lurie or some other famous person. I'll throw in some stuff about the aquifer or economic yeah. development no, it's, it's or immigration or whatever it is. Them, yeah. You know, so yeah, so you try to keep people uh, uh, interested and, and, and aware and then next thing you know they're following and they're, they're kind of picking up on everything you're saying and, and we try to make uh, you know, a, a good deal of that be something that really affects their lives, especially mm -hmm. at the municipal level. So it's, it's you know, it's uh, politics, you know, you can be a policy guy or you can be a hack who tries to stay elected. Um, but no matter what you're doing, you got to have a little showbiz in there, I think, to be successful. Well, and, and actually, and you do, the, the other part that I found out that I, well, the, the one, the site that came up was, was your campaign mm -hmm. one. And actually that interested me in that it hasn't been touched <laughs> since the, the campaign. So well, either you don't want to get reelected and you're not supposed oh, well, to grooming we'll, yourself for it, or <laughs> you think that that was good enough. We're going to reboot that pretty soon. Right now we've been, uh, so, uh, you know, I have, I have a mayor's page. Anyone can follow on uh, Facebook. People can follow my personal page, and I have a Twitter account. And those really generate, I have about, you know, four or 5,000 followers uh actually between all of my accounts i probably have about six or seven thousand followers yeah. so it's pretty good How, what, what is that like for you know your, your university employee that is mm -hmm. you, you, sure. you had that but the the circle of influence unless you're in the top administration is right. you know limited to department building exactly. college but it it has that 
but your background before that then, was it the music? Was it you being a local in that sense, uh, business side? What, what's I think a little jack of all trades, you know. It's like uh, owning a business, working in restaurants. I worked in Radio Maria. I helped open Radio Maria. I worked at the old Blind Pig when nothing was downtown. So I was kind of in the trenches when uh, when downtown Champaign was uh, just having its the seeds of its renaissance. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think it's just, you know, I've worked so many different jobs over the years. When you're a musician, you know, you work a lot of stuff, manage a record, uh, co-manage a record store, um, and you get to meet a lot of people, and you get a lot of experience, and you get to be, if you're a musician especially, you get to be poor, not have insurance, and uh, mm -hmm. and learn to assist, and learn to get by, and, and learn what it takes, and the struggles. So I think as an elected official now, who's doing okay, you know, uh, financially, uh, I'm keenly aware of what it's like. Uh, my, when I was a musician, my wife was a waitress when my kids were uh, born. We didn't have insurance. You know, Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood did our prenatal care, and we had a lot of uh, mm -hmm. social aid. And now that I make a little money, I pay a lot of taxes. I'm proud to do it, and I'm proud to support those organizations mm -hmm. and let people know and, and donate to those organizations that do provide that safety net because, because I was there. And just this might be seen in Mexico, you're better off now, but it has nothing to do with your elected office. I'm uh, well, <laughs> well, I'm better off because it, there's there's an additional stipend, and I worked my way up. I, I you know I, I pulled myself up. I started out delivering packages at the university. And I, I I became a facilities manager, so my salary almost doubled. Mm -hmm. uh, not instantly; it took a long of time. Course, of course. But from the point where I had no insurance, no job, to you know, 15 years later, I, I do pretty well, and I don't complain about it. I'm happy to pay my taxes, and I'm happy to uh, support all those organizations that help people because uh, I feel like I'm a success story from that. I mm -hmm. use the safety net, and now I contribute. You so. do. Hey, actually, the, I was listening to an interview by, um, I think it was Moscowine for WHYY to uh, Sonia Sotomayor, Mm -hmm. uh, about her previous experience, her family, extended family, mm -hmm. and all the stuff that they've had. Sure. And then she gets asked, does now your high position in the court, your position now is influenced by those experiences you, you, you've had. Yeah, absolutely. And in this case, then, this show being about immigration, I, I, I wonder then, um, for me, Champagne is, Champaign-Urbana has a lot of uh, immigrants. Mm -hmm. We see them on campus. And yet we don't see them anywhere else because they're working the back. Uh, it's, yeah. As far as you know, construction jobs, mm -hmm. I, I don't see them. They're not as visible. Right. I know they're here because the census tells me they're here, and because I have contacts. Right. But the visibility of of the immigrant experience, especially not the doctor side, but the the, the bottom up, sure. is is very much here. Well, you know, we we we're more aware of it at the city because we look at neighborhoods, and it's uh, you know, it's. Not necessarily ironic, but it's it's pleasantly surprising that there's areas like Shadowwood, which could could really uh, historically have been sort of a a sketchy, difficult uh, mm -hmm. part of town, actually has become uh, populated substantially by immigrants, by Hispanics, and there's a strong familial bond amongst them, and it's one of our strongest, most stable neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is because of the immigrant immigrant population, and we have you know there's people from Laos, there's people from China, and Japan, and I mean, China all, over, and all, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that uh, you know as we go along, as we create more opportunities, we're going to see more of that. Right now, Champagne's one of those places where we have more jobs than we have people to work them who are qualified to work them. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about you know things in Research Park or things at Wolfram Research or even things at, at Kraft, you know, as far as like a plant manager or something, a line tech, uh, you know, that makes fifty thousand dollars a year with a two-year degree, uh, there's not enough. Mm -hmm. And we need to work with Parkland College. We need to work with our high schools. We need to work with our middle schools. We need to work. Would you, know. you go as far as working like Indianapolis? Actually, St. Louis website went up. The Chicago website's been up for about a year and a half. Uh, uh, immigrant friendly city. Yeah. Come to our town. And then they. Uh, well, you know, I, it runs the gamut. I mean, it, it, there's certainly. Uh, you know, I've seen you. I'm very proud of you. There's a lot of individuals who look at it from the angle of, you know, families who want to better their lives. They want to bring, you know, there's there's certainly a real life aspect uh, to make a case for. From where I sit, to be honest, it makes good sense. It's good business, uh, whether it's agricultural, whether it's uh, biological sciences, whatever it is, programming. Um, 
people come to this university, people come to this region of the country, they migrate here and they work and they create lives and they become citizens. And we have such a culturally diverse uh, community here in Champaign. It's amazing. When I was a kid, it wasn't like this. You know, now you go out and, you know, you have a fantastic, real, authentic Mexican restaurant, not Taco Bell. You have a real, you know, you have sushi, you have a Vietnamese. We have so much. Um, and uh, culturally, the things that come, the events that come to Cran or the events that come, uh, and, you know, and, and just as far as sports, whatever it may be, we see that that so would reflects, you, say you know, the that immigrants. Now jumping to like an immigration debate, uh, mm -hmm. some people say, actually, that's just a federal problem, uh, meaning your, your, your legal status is something that the federal government needs to work on the Congress. No, and no. for us, it's just a resident and we work with them, whatever they may be. No, no. I, I think, you know, at the state level, I think I was so proud that they just moved that so quickly through to get the uh, driver's, driver's license. license. That makes sense. You know, and it's not giving somebody something. It's making them a part of something so that they're legitimate and... Uh, you know, we have less of a, of a divide. Um, and, you know, the same thing with, uh, as I said, it, it runs the gamut, whether it's somebody who came up here and is working at a farm or working at the broom factory or whatever it may be, or somebody who came here to school as a graduate student and has a great innovation or, or invention or whatever, research. Mm -hmm. um, Champagne's a great place to live, and if people want to live here, it makes good sense for us to people, you know, bring people here who want to work, who want to contribute, who want to be part of this community. That's, so those are the people you want, who come here and yeah. want to be a part of it. Uh, Champaign's a very vibrant community, and I think that uh, we're all the better for it. We're certainly better economically. If you yeah. have people who are employed, um, you know, let's, let's get them working. Let's get them on the rolls. Let's get them paying taxes, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah know? The American way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I mean, that, not, that... not to sound cynical, but, you know, if you're here working your, working your keister yeah. off and, and being a good citizen, well, you know, pay your taxes and, and yeah, be official. Let's do it. That makes sense, then. That, that's the whole background for you signing that, the, the letter in sure. which several mayors, uh, I don't know, a couple of dozen from the state of mm -hmm. Illinois signed, urging the congressman. Yep. Uh, our congressman to, to do so and while we haven't had good luck with our congressman uh, signing up yet uh, he hasn't said no yet so well we'll see you know I, I, I think uh, disappointed a lot of my colleagues but I understand that you know uh, there's a game and and when you have a rural constituency you got to be really sensitive because people don't understand but to my mind whether it's marriage equality whether it's immigration whether it's uh, you know uh, sustainability you got to educate your constituents not say what do you think you know what's going to keep me elected you got to go out and tell them this is why this is good this is why this is something that makes sense mm -hmm. Not, not just, you know, what do you think? You're going to vote against me if I vote this way or you're going to vote against me if I vote this way? You know, yes. it, it, uh, and uh, I understand that it, it's, it's, it, it, politics are a tough game, but uh, I, I guess maybe I've gotten a little uh, used to spending my political capital on things that I truly believe in and know that are right. So. Well, now you sound like a politician there. Well, you know, I, it, it's, it's not but, a... But as long as you're sincere, it works. Absolutely. A champagne oh. will be better with immigration reform. Mm. The central Illinois will be better. Our agricultural... I, I, I it boggles my mind that we have congressmen who extol the virtues of our, uh, you know, wonderful soil and agricultural opportunities in Illinois, yet they aren't moving on mm -hmm. immigration reform. When, when you know, the, 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 the advocates for the, you know, farmers are saying, like, wait... We need we this. Need them. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Need, you know, we, we need Plenty people farmers, who want to work. Yeah. We need people. Yeah. You know, farmers Bureau. Or I mean, whatever. It every, may be. They, they, they've come out very publicly and nationally yeah. and doing the lobby to, to do so. Yeah. So so we're in agreement in all those things, too. I sure. mean, we see all those values, those contributions. Um, uh, the, the only thing that remains in me is then, then how do we act on it? From my position, I couldn't sit on my hands knowing that this was such a positive thing, that mm -hmm. the facts are very evident. And yet we had people resisting. So mm -hmm. I get involved in an advocacy organization so that we get yep. done what needs to be done. Uh, but I've certainly used my other positions, my other hats to bring the subject up, to educate. Uh, in, on, in your seat, uh, what does the city of Champaign do? Because you're, you're, you have several hats. You have many mm -hmm. hats from music to, to also being mayor. Um, 
What does the city of Champaign c c come in to do? You know, we don't have a lot of power, but we have a bully pulpit. We can send the message. We can be an advocate, as, as are you, uh, only at a different level where we're talking about this is a key component of our economic prosperity. This is a key component of having uh, our, our diversity of our community, of having, a, you know, like I said, a vibrant community. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's really, I think it's more of telling our elected officials at the next level, get something done. You know, we Would need to you, get something done. Um, and, and this is not to, 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 you know, this is not a commitment, just exploring ideas. When, uh, when you both signed the letter, both mayor of Champaign, mayor of Urbana, mm -hmm. it was for me a very good sign that we are in sync. We, sure. you know, as cities, there are things that have to be handled. Differently. We do things very differently, and yeah. some. But I, I think on the big issues, I think we're very like-minded. I think at the end of the day, we all want to wind up at the same place. It's just yeah. how we get there and what things we do. And immigration reform is one of the things that we're you know, keenly. So maybe uh, you know, if I may say, actually, additionally at the city level, one thing I thought about is, you know, the city will uh, help co-sponsor or help to host uh, different sorts of community fairs for different uh, different ethnic neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We'll have a you know a, a Latino day, Hispanic stuff, where we'll have people bring out the resources in the community, invite them out, have people so that they feel welcome and they know uh, this is where you can get dental care. This is someone who's going to give you financial aid or well, financial assistance. Or speaking financial of that, you know, the city of Chicago, taking that idea one step further, said, you know what? I think in their, in their case, it's like 33% of new businesses are actually by immigrants. Yeah. And so what they do is they have a business license day and they take their, their office people and they go to a fair that is in the Polish neighborhood right. and they'll set up yeah. and they educate and then start doing the paperwork for people to do that. And so they move to different areas. Instead of sitting in City Hall waiting for somebody to come apply, they go out and, and, and lay out the paperwork for yeah. And you know, it, sometimes at, at, a, at a legislative level, at a municipal level, sometimes government moves, it's like turning a battleship around. So really, sometimes it takes a lot of time. Sometimes things happen really quickly. Uh, but that is something, you know, that I would like to explore. It's all uh, oftentimes about resources and the, the political will. You know, yeah. having a, I'm one of nine votes. Um, but if I can get four more, you know, we can we can move forward with some of these types of initiatives. Uh, it's to see that if, you know, the people of Champaign will back us on this. Um, but you know, I, but I believe you know the things that we do now, uh, whether it's an underserved neighbor or underserved population, whether it's a, a specific you know ethnic population. I think the city of Champaign really, uh, in earnest, has has a. A, a good grasp of what we need to do. It's mm -hmm. just having the resources to do it as fi eff effectively and efficiently and successfully. Well, maybe we can look uh, together for both in, in sure. on the services side, but also on, on on the contribution side. I'm sure there are plenty of people that that would be very willing to. Tax tax dollars are limited. You know, we just had that uh, that that weather event that's going to cost us a fortune with all the salt and freezing mm -hmm. and overtime and so forth and. The repairing the potholes. Yeah. It's going to cost a fortune. So a lot of times when it comes down to municipal government, it's police, fire, and public works, the three pillars. Uh, but that's not to say that we cannot partner with the private well, actually, sector, see, with faith-based organizations. Yes. Chicago I, I think that's opened an office. Yep. Indianapolis said, let's work with existing organizations and roll out an invitation to immigrants, but Absolutely. through agencies that already exist. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think that's the best way to get things done, is to get stakeholders that are, whether it's a faith-based organization, a nonprofit organization, a neighborhood group, whatever it may be, but get the stakeholders involved, vested, and working in concert, because the city can help with a lot of stuff, with helping to write grants, helping to find resources, helping to promote things. So, you know, there's there's opportunities there, um, even if we don't have a whole lot of tax dollars to put behind something. Well, not, not that I'm asking for tax dollars, but I think that uh, they both help, and sure. uh, the willingness on both sides to, to put it forward. Uh, Maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, uh, I'll go back to the group and see your immigration forum because that we have we have the religious institutions, we sure. have the, the 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 university people, the students, and certainly the community people are also. Oh, we're all one community here. Yeah. I mean, you know, when, I, when people say, you know, I'll hear diff people of different, uh, you know, ethnic or racial backgrounds talk about the community. And uh, I just think that's all of us, you know, it, it doesn't break down. So. In fact, I, I had that uh, back when we were studying this. I remember the first press conference, uh, one of the reporters said, because we were doing a community meeting, and so we wanted to inform people of what we were doing, and, and mm. one of the reporters says, so what does the community think? <laughs> and I'm like, 
I'm not offended, but I did feel like my tail had been stepped on. I said, wait a minute, look, look who you have in front of you. We are the community. Right. This Everybody. is what we want. Yeah. And then he just froze at me because, it, you know, I, I thought it was an unfair question given the whole preparation. And so I very much feel like we are. We, if yeah. we live here, we are the community. Yeah. And when we act, the community is acting. So. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we have a very short show, but it's aired three, four times a week. Uh, right. So uh, all the new spikes in your Facebook, it's going to come because of this show. So just <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward to it. Well, thank you all so right. much. I appreciate thank you the very opportunity. Much for your time. It's great to be here. It's been a pleasure. It's been another uh, short episode, but always uh, hopefully to inform you about immigration issues on the national, on the state, and on the local level, certainly now with Champaign's mayor. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and until next time, thank you.